Hello everybody, I'm Ard. Welcome to another episode of Minecraft Enigmatica 2 Expert. This week, we're going to admit that last week was a failure, right? Because I didn't actually succeed in making the diamond anvil, did I? So, this week, we're going to go delve back into the magic side of the pack and go build out the pieces we need to make a mana diamond and actually move forward with being able to finish the diamond anvil. So, to start with that, we need to make a mana pool, but it's not so simple as making a mana pool because to do that, we need to build a bunch of other things to actually fill up the mana pool. So, I guess we should stop making excuses and go get started on that, eh? To make the mana pool, you need... A diluted mana pool. And to make the diluted mana pool, you just need living rock and light blue dye. And living rocks are around a pure daisy, kind of like the arc, kind of like the logs we did way back in an earlier episode. We use arcane stone, which we made back in the Thomcraft episode. It was really easy. Just put that around the daisy, and it creates living rock. You just surround a daisy like this, and you then sit here and wait impatiently for it to convert. And there we go. All right, now that we have this, we can make the diluted pool. Next up is the actual mana pool, which requires living rock, the diluted pool, a rock crystal, which we got from Master Sorcery way back, and a white petal block and a light gray petal block. And those are required, those come from light gray petals from the Botania flowers that we can fly and lying around. If you, however, do not have them lying around, you can make floral fertilizer. Um, you can either do it using uh, gray flor floral powers, which are ground up uh, the ground up petals from the flowers using a mortar and pestle, either the the Pam's Harvest Craft one or the Batania one, they're both pretty close to the same. Or using red and yellow dye in this pack to jumpstart you into it and then some bone meal. Usually what I do is I bootstrap in by uh, picking some whatever flowers are nearby and then taking the colors that I don't need and grinding them up into powder and using that powder to make fertilizer so that I can get more flowers. It's usually pretty self-propagating. So to use the fertilizer, all you do is just, just like bone meal, you put it on grass and it generates flowers all around you. And you can just go pick up all that you need. All right, and once you have all those, you can make the mana pool. Now, that said, we made the mana pool, but what we didn't make is something that can generate mana to put in the pool, nor the means to put it into the pool once we do that. But let's put it down and move on to the next step. So if we look in the quest book for Batania, there's two places we need to look. First, we need to make the mana spreader and also the wand of the forest once we do that. And then we're gonna go with an endo flame just to get some basic mana into it. So starting with the endo flame, all we need are two brown petals, a red petal, and a light gray petal, and, some, and a seed. And we can make the endo flame. All right, and as a reminder of how the petal pocket theory works, you put water in. Then you chuck in the items you want in there. And then you toss in a seed and you get your item. I'm gonna make three of these because I want more than one to generate mana faster. But that doesn't make them any more expensive. Alright, for the next step, we need to make the mana spreader, and for that, we're back in my Thomcraft laboratory. Because to make the mana spreader, we need illumination powder from Astral Sorcery, which isn't too hard to make, except it requires yellow niter. And to make yellow niter, well, that's in the Crucible, and it's the step we have to do in Thomcraft next anyways. To make an item in the Crucible, you need to put in items that have the correct mana in it, inside the, the Crucible to melt down, and then throw in some sort of catalyst item, in this case Glowstone Dust. So we need 10 Potentia, 10 Ignis, and 10 Lux. To see how much an item gives you, you can hold mouse over an item and hold down Shift, and it'll show you what it has. Charcoal has two-thirds of what we need, right by itself. For the other piece, we can use torches, and we need two torches to get two lux. I'm gonna make a couple niter using these. The problem is this puts a couple extra herba in, which eventually causes flux, so we need to be careful about that in the long term. So we start by grabbing our handy dandy bucket, getting some water, and tossing it into the crucible. Then, 
We chuck in the items we want to melt down. Back up and let them melt and then they combine like that. Now we have a potion type mixture. We can take our glowstone and chuck that in and now we have niter. As luck would have it, it's now nighttime as we step out of the Thomcraft lab and we can go over to the luminous crafting table and set it up to make the illumination powder and we just chuck it in like that and use the wand on it. Magic! All right, to make the mana spreader, all you need are living wood, which is just logs placed next to the daisy, a petal block, which you've seen, the powder we just made, and glimmering liver wood, which is just living wood combined with glowstone. So, uh, we've got all that. We can make the mana spreader. That said, we still need one more thing, and that's the wand of the forest. Now, thankfully, this is easy to make. It's just three twigs and two sticks, and the twigs are just two living wood. All right, so now that we have this done, now what do we do with all of this? And for that, we've got to come back over here by the mana pool. We'll start by placing the endoflames flames down, and then we will put the mana spreader up above the mana pool. Break that block down, and then you take your wand, if you if you shift right click, it switches between bind and function mode. We want it on bind mode. We want to right click the mana spreader and link it to the mana pool. We go to the endo flames. We can then link those to here. Although in, although in theory, these will automatically link on their own. Okay, and then once everything is linked up, the endo flames generate mana by consuming things that are flammable. So we're gonna throw down some charcoal. And as you can see, they're starting to light up. As they light up and start creating mana, they will start destroying the charcoal on the ground. And now you can see there's some mana in the pool. If the endoflames are properly kicked into the, to the spreader, you'll see on the right of its bar there, it has the check mark next to the spreader, and you can see these are all connected to the mana spreader. When you mouse over the mana pool, if, you, if it doesn't show it already, you can shift right click it to show um, the mana in the mana pool. As you can see, there's a very tiny blue sliver on the left side, and that's not enough to do anything with yet. So we need to make give it some time and generate some more mana. Right now, I'm going to continue to feed it manually until I have enough to do what I need to do, but long term, I'm going to move all of this and build a contraption to feed it automatically. As you can see, when I mouse over this with the diamond, it shows an X in it that shows that there is not currently enough mana in it to convert the diamond over. But you can see the constant beam going in now at least. All right, and as you can see, I bottle timed all the flowers to generate the mana more quickly, so they're just chewing through the charcoal I dropped on the ground now. Now when I mouse over this with the diamond, you can see that it has enough. And as with everything else in Botana, you just chuck it in and it comes out and convert it. Now we have everything we need to make the Empowered Diamantine. All right, so that was a bit of a slog. So to use the Empower, now we put the four items that we need, the Manilunum, the Malachite, the Zirconium Dust, and the Mana Diamond on the outer pedestals. You put the item you want to convert on the center one. It costs the exact same amount of power and items to make a full block as it does an ingot, or in this case, a diamond. So you wanna do full blocks in almost every case so you don't use up expensive materials. So let's put that on. It helps if I remember that I need to convert the diamond blocks to diamantine first. And you right click that onto the empower and it starts zapping lasers into it. This is a pretty expensive process. It burns through a lot of power and it takes quite a bit of time. So let's just wait patiently for this to finish. And as you can see, it's just sapping the power straight out of the display stand. I have some pretty fat pipes going into this and it's still just draining it dry. But there it completes and now we have the finished block on top of the stand. You can just right click to take it off. All right, so I think we're finally ready to actually make the diamond anvil, guys. We have everything we need now. So let's take a quick look, shall we? To make the diamond anvil, we need a whole bunch of relatively mundane stuff and the item repair. To make the item repair, we need, well, the stuff we just made, some coils which we already have, and then an ender casing, which is also fairly simple. The only real catch here is more diamonds and black quartz, which is just black quartz or 
uh, smelted down or macerated into Chris crystals. So it's all pretty easy to get. And we did it, folks. Now I have a diamond anvil. Crisis averted. Let's go put it in the mob farm and increase our output significantly. All right, so now I've got the diamond anvil plugged into the network. It's powered via the XNet system. And it pulls in from this chest and dumps it back into the arc furnace via the top. As you can see, a couple of items are already in here. Uh, one's finished repair and the other's already been done. So now we just need to uh, turn on the servo for it and export it out. And you can see what it does when it gets over to the arc furnace. And there it comes out and you saw that I got two ingots. Previously, I would get uh, nuggets from these. So we're getting a lot more materials out of them now, which is good for producing like some rare stuff like the Supremium ingots or uh, Terra Steel. So, fast improvement, gigantic rabbit hole. Let's go find something a little less strenuous to do now, shall we? All right, so in full disclosure, I actually needed to get all this done to do one more step with the mob farm. And this is where things get a little interesting and possibly a little cheaty feeling. So there's another thing we wanted to make that's in the quest book. Right here below the empower is the spawner changer. The spawner changer lets you change a spawner to a different critter. And it really isn't that hard to make as long as you can make the Diamantine Crystal Block, which, well, guess what? We've got now. So let me make this and show you what I'm going to do with it. So here I am in the nether looking for something rather specific. I'm looking for wither skeletons. And why do I want a wither skeleton? Because one of the things we can make is a Wilton Scuther spawner now, which lets us get all the tasty drops from the wither skeleton. Whoa, or I could have gotten a gas movie. Oh my God. <laughs> this was not what I was expecting to find. <laughs> but unfortunately I've only got the one spawner changer. So we'll have to do the wither one later. <laughs> and back to our base. All right, so we're back in our base now. So we start by putting the cardboard box that we stole a mob spawner from the dungeon from a while back. Take this off and see that it's a skeleton one. Take the spawn chainer and right click it and now it's a wither skeleton spawner. Then we take one of the drops of evil that we had remaining and right click that and it pops off and it becomes a restarted mob spawner, which a, lets you pick up the mob spawner without breaking it, and B, acts like it's on cursed earth. So let's go step inside the mob farm and I'll show you what I'm doing with this. So back inside the mob farm, when we come inside, you see I already have a restored spawner here. This is actually for blazes. I made this a little while back when I first made this without telling you guys because I didn't want to ruin the surprise of putting, of making the wither skeleton one. So we'll just pop this down next to it. And now we will start seeing Wither Skeleton spawn and die just like everything else in here. And we'll get all of its tasty little drops. Like the uh, Wither Ash and the Bones and the more drops of evil so we can make more of these spawners. And let me tell you folks, I have some plans for these spawners and they don't all involve monsters. So uh, let's let this cook for a while and we'll see what we can get out of it. All right, so once again, this is another week with a lot of progress and a whole lot of loot chests. So I'm going to go pick up everything and let's go see what we got. All right, so it looks like there's nine chests. Let's take a look at what we got. A uh, redstone lamp, not that exciting. A market, which we have. Zuc Ooh, zesty zucchini, which we haven't eaten, so that's good. Green slime block, which we found in a dungeon. Vision floor, which we got last time. Eye Avenger, which, well, we're going to need to make a bunch anyway soon. Uh, another deep dark portal. A soul bead, which isn't... You know what, I don't even remember what this does. And a bottle of enchanting, which we totally don't need. So another relatively disappointing week in the loot front. All right, so while we're still on the theme of upgrading the mob farm, there's one last thing that I want to do. I want to make the fortune add-on for the mob farm. The fortune add-on adds fortune or looting to machines that, that allow for it, which allows to drop more loot per kill. The, and then you need to enchant it with the proper level of it to get it. The trick is to get it, well, we have this. This, however, is a pink slime ingot, which we do not have. And to get a pink slime ingot, you need pink slime, which comes from one place only, the mob slaughter factory. So we need to make this real fast, slap that into the mob farm as well, so we can turn it on periodically to generate some pink slime. 
and uh, we will be able to make the force add on. So let's get on this and let me go make a machine casing and the rest of the pieces. All right, so let's just put the mob slaughter farm right here. Let's see if it's facing the correct way. It is. And realize I don't have a connector. All right, let's try this again. All right, now we have it connected. Now we need to give it power, just like everything else. And we should be able to turn it on if it isn't already. Okay, and now it's on. So let's turn off the mob crusher. Turn on the other one. Maybe put on some night vision so that I can see. And there it slowly goes. And I realized I forgot a range upgrade, just like the other one. All right, so now I'm back and I've got the range upgrade, so let's slot that in. And now you can see things are starting to die, or at least more of them originally. It was just the ones directly in front of it. Can't get the spiders because the spiders are too low to the ground, but that's fine. As you can see, we're slowly getting pink slime. We only need a thousand to fill up a bucket because we only really need one ingot right now, but I'm gonna let it fill up for a little bit just so we have an excess for now. Uh, back in a few minutes. All right, so now I have a couple buckets of pink slime in my tank here. Let's go dig a hole and I'll show you what we need to do next. So you have to pour it back out into the world, which will spawn us pink slime, which you then kill for the pink slime balls. All right, so now that we have the pink slime balls, well, this isn't what we actually need to make the upgrade because to make the ingot, we need a fluid sieving machine, but we did need the slime balls to make this. So now we just need to put this together and this is actually pretty simple by comparison. All right, so I got this powered up and I got some pink slime put into it. So let's add the iron ingots and start making the pink slime ingots. And now we can make the fortune upgrade, which is pretty easy and we have all the rest of this. Now comes the fun part where I'm going to make a whole bunch of swords and try to get fortune three enchants on them. Well, thankfully I realized there was a workaround before I made too many swords because it turns out you can just enchant these directly. Okay folks, so I just had things go completely not to plan here. So while I'm able to enchant these directly, I was only able to get fortune ones out of them. And in the quest to do better, things went completely off the rails. So. As you can see right here, I added two new machines, the Void Anvil and the Enchantment Extractor. It will let you, let you put a book in here and an enchanted item and it will move one of the enchants into a book and let you move them around that way. I figured this might let me remove the fortune add-on from this and very easily move fortune onto other things, but I cannot move this up here. I also made a bunch of stone swords, never saw the fortune upgrade. I then figured, well, maybe I can strip the fortune upgrade off of these. That works, but then re-enchanting them only gets me fortune one. So I'm just gonna leave a fortune one for now. Um, if anyone knows a better way to actually get up to fortune three on these things, please let me know in the comments because I'm at a loss right now. So right about now, I suspect that some of you who've been paying really close attention have been yelling at me for about a minute now because I realized I shouldn't have been making swords um, and that was part of the core problem to begin with. That said, making pickaxes wasn't necessarily a better solution either because I made a lot of pickaxes as well as swords and as well as books. But with all of these pickaxes, I only got two books with Fortune 1 on them right here. Uh, I never saw anything higher, so that's not great. But I can at least get to Fortune 2 now and apply this and at least be a little bit better than I would have been at Fortune 1. Um, but still, if somebody knows a better way than this, I think, any advice would be welcome at this point because I'm I'm just I'm out of XP and I'm out of ideas right now. All right, folks. So this has been a pretty productive day. We finally got the diamond anvil done, and we actually got to my secret secondary plan of upgrading the mob farm to use restorb spawners to get wither skeletons, so we can start making more restorb spawners for a super secret project that I hope to do in the near future. So we'll see how that goes. But as always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.